Hi, I'm Ed Knopfsinger. I'm the owner of this beautiful instrument behind me. This 12-inch refractor, which took more than a decade to complete, was custom manufactured to the most rigorous of standards by DNG Optical in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Barely used, it is in like new condition. Due to poor health, I unfortunately need to sell this unique and much cherished telescope. The 12 inch achromatic objective lens is constructed of proprietary crown and flint glasses and was custom made to demanding specifications. Barry Griner of DNG Optical reported on the lens and tube assembly in a letter to me as follows Dear Ed, Please find, find enclosed lens number 11036, a 12 inch f12.2 objective lens we completed for you. This lens has been fully AR multi coated as per your request. Lens tests indicate the lens to be within 1 8 wave on the front with a very smooth spherical departure. There are no noticeable zones and negligible astigmatism. Surface texture is also very smooth. All tests were conducted at 550 nanometers. Ed, this lens represents the finest large lens we have ever produced. Overall correction and smoothness is superb. I don't believe it is possible for us to produce a better 12 inch lens. This is a unique research grade telescope that is not only absolutely beautiful but also a classic as they are not making any of the large refractors like this anymore. It reminds us of the beautiful Unitrons and the old Alvin Clark refractors telescopes that we saw and dreamed of in our youth. All materials used in this mounting have been chosen to avoid rust and to enhance longevity and stability. From specially selected stainless steel materials to uh, aircraft grades of aluminum, this mounting includes push button controls and all necessary electronics required for auto guiding. It also employs RA and declination servo motors, which have a greater speed range, more power, and are smoother than stepping motors. All co componentry is of the highest quality for the gold contact switches to the special solid state circuitry employed in the, in the electronics. The hand paddles have high and low correction speeds on both the right ascension and declination axis plus the micro switches uh, buttons that are illuminated red and uh, dark to be seen and a remarkable feature of this particular series 3 mounting is that it uniquely incorporates both traditional analog and digital setting circles. The precisely machined analog circles include one uh, that is 18 and 3 quarter inches in diameter on the polar axis. Okay, this little panel here is the control panel that operates the whole instrument. And you have these toggle switches here which you can go into lunar for the moon, solar for the sun, sidereal for the stars and this switch here you can go if you're operating north or south of the equator if you go south of the equator then everything has to go in reverse the motors have to turn in the opposite direction the setting circles are red in the opposite direction this port here is for auto guiding if you're taking long exposure photographs you plug your auto guider into this and the hand paddle plugs right into this which through the push buttons operates the telescope and that's where it goes. The hand paddle also has additional controls. You have F for fast rate, S for the slow rate, and G for guiding in the center. This is a three position switch. These little push button switches are illuminated red in the dark. They're gold contact switches and they're very high quality. They're made in Denmark. Okay, this assembly here is called a double focus. And Byers Company is the only one in the world that makes them like this. It's absolutely unique. It has one focus here to bring the tube in and out. 
It has a rotating fine focus here, which allows you to very accurately and sensitively focus for an exact focus of your camera or spectrograph or whatever instrument you're using. So you have two focuses here. And it can be locked with this screw, which is a positive clamp that wraps completely around the tube and, and rigidly clamps it, regardless of how much weight you have on the, the tail end. Okay, this is another unique feature of this refractor. This big piece of steel is solid steel, and we put that on there, it's very heavy, we put that on there to act as a counterweight, and it, it uh, helps to counterbalance the tube assembly. This is a stainless steel ring that allows the astronomer to grab a hold of the telescope and move it anywhere in the sky by grabbing this ring. These are special clamps which hold these heavy steel pieces in place. So this whole assembly here is quite heavy, and as I said, it acts as a as a counterweight. How long did it take to make that? Good. This this steel ring required a week of time to make this and incorporate it into the system of machine shop time. Quite a, uh, quite expensive to make. This telescope is secured by two stabilizing struts. They're basically hand custom made, hand machined. Uh, uh, turnbuckles to, to prevent this telescope from moving at all in extremely heavy winds or an earthquake while it's stored. And there's two of these. We'll start with one and you'll see this is included with the telescope and we just take these off and uh, I always just put the bolt right back on and just let it hang right here during my observing session. That way nothing ever gets lost. And while I'm here, I'll show how we're gonna turn on the telescope. I just plug it into the light socket and uh, turn it on. And now uh, she's running. Okay, the telescope electronics are in the bottom half of the pier and behind this plate and uh, all of the electronics is in here. The top compartment is a storage compartment and it allows you to store eyepieces or equipment or anything like that inside this steel compartment and you can key lock it for security. This scale is a, is a latitude scale. Very few telescopes have ever been equipped with this kind of a scale. Uh, the reason we put it on is so you, when you set the telescope up and try to align it parallel with the Earth's axis, the polar axis, parallel with the Earth's axis, it makes it very easy to do so because you can, you can read off the, the elevation of the polar shaft above the horizontal plane just by looking at this scale. This uh, mounting can be used any place north or south of the equator. The uh, mounting is designed for this, this big circular bearing and the center of gravity is directly over the two bearings so that you can go down pretty close to zero or way up here without off balancing the, tele the mounting. It'll still be with the center of gravity, it'll still be correctly spaced. Circle, this is called the right ascension circle. And it tells the astronomer the position of a star east and west. And it also has a vernier scale, which is on the top side. And this motor, this motor drives that circle at the same rate that the polar axis is turning through the sidereal driving system. So that wherever you move the telescope, it always correctly reads the right ascension of the object under observation. All right, this is the part you want. Swing around here, and then we'll get it looking right at the sun shortly. Recently featured in the uh, February 2013 issue of Sky and Telescope as a four-page uh, feature and uh, very, very nicely done by Sky and Telescope. But uh, I'm very proud of this instrument. It's going to be very hard for me personally to let it go because it is the fulfillment of a life stream. But uh, whoever has it is going to have a wonderful, wonderful telescope and I hope they enjoy it for a lifetime.